Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm answering question number eight from the June 2019 GCE Mechanics M1 paper. This question here is about connected particles and pulleys. It says two particles A and B have masses 3m and m, respectively. The particles are attached to the ends of a light and extensible string, which passes over a smooth or light, smooth fixed pulley. The system is held at rest with the string taut. The hanging parts of the string are vertical and A is at a height H above a horizontal floor as shown in figure 3. The system is now released from rest and in the subsequent motion B does not reach the pulley. For the motion of A and B before A hits the floor, write down an equation of motion for A and an equation of motion for B. Now when it says an equation of motion, it doesn't mean one of the SUVA equations. It means the resultant force Equation formed by the resultant force, that's what it means. Okay, so now, what we have here is, let's consider the particle A. So, let's say this is the particle A. The forces acting on A are its weight, which is acting vertically down. That's the weight. And we also have the tension in the string, which is holding it up. So, that's tension, and that's the weight. Now, the weight is equal to the mass times g, the mass of A is given as 3m. So this is 3mg. And we know that A is going to accelerate towards the ground. How do we know it's going to move this way? One, they told us the B doesn't reach the pulley. So that's one clue that, you know, B is going to go up, but it's not going to go up so, so much that it will hit the pulley. And uh, the other thing, the mass of A is greater than the mass of B, so it's going to go down in this direction. So the acceleration is going to be down in this case for A. This is for the particle A. For the particle B, I'll draw the forces on that as well. Same thing, you have the tension acting upwards, and you have its weight acting vertically downwards. And we know that the weight in this case is mg, because its, it's mass is just m. So we have the tension and the weight. Now b is going to be accelerating up with the same magnitude as this acceleration, because it's connected by a light inextensible string. Okay, so now, if we consider, this is particle b. So if we consider part one, the motion equation of motion for A. Okay, so this is for A. For A, what I'm going to do is I, I see that A is, is moving down. So I always like to resolve forces in the direction in which the thing is moving. So as it's moving down, I'm going to take down as positive, in which case I've got 3mg minus t is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is 3ma. Okay, the mass times, that's the resultant force equals mass times acceleration. Now, one of the questioners in the channel has been asking questions like, for example, why can't we just say the upward forces equal the downward forces? Well, in this case, they don't equal each other. That's why it's accelerating. There is a resultant force which is causing it to accelerate in one direction. They would equal each other if the resultant force was zero. They would be the same then. Okay, and there would be no acceleration. So when something is not accelerating, either it's going at constant velocity or it's stationary, that's when you can say the upward force and the downward forces are equal to each other. Okay, so that's something that's very important, um, you know, if it's not accelerating in that direction. All right, so it's accelerating this direction, so we can't say that T equals mg. If it was, for example, something where you have the weight of something, um, like that's the weight and this is the reaction force, and it's accelerating, perpendicular to this yes r equals w because the acceleration is perpendicular to this and it doesn't have any component in that direction but in this direction you know the force acting this way is not equal to the force acting that way if it's accelerating it will be that this minus that is equal to the mass times acceleration the resultant force is the mass times acceleration that's an important point that a few of you are asking about in some of the questions so i thought i would try to clear that up so that's the equation of motion for particle a and for particle B, this time, B is going to go upwards. So up is positive. So I'm going to take for B, I'm going to resolve taking the upward direction as positive, in which case I'll have T take away mg is equal to the mass times acceleration, which is m times a. All right, you don't say mga, no, you don't like the weight times acceleration, the mass times acceleration. So these are the two equations of motion for A and B. Then it says, hence show that until A hits the floor, the acceleration of A is 0.5G. So basically, the acceleration of A and the acceleration of G will both be the same. Okay, we've got to find that.
All right, so the acceleration of A is 0 0.5 G. Now we have here two equations. I'm going to label this equation 1. I'm going to label this equation 2. So if I add these two equations together, the equation 1 plus equation 2, then the T's will be eliminated. The T's will be eliminated. Okay, that's uh, what we want. We want to find A. So the two unknowns are A and T here. Okay, um, so what we can do is we can add these two equations together. You've got minus t plus t is 0, 3mg minus mg is 2mg, and that's equal to 3ma plus ma, which is 4ma. And we want to find what a is. So if we take 2mg and we divide it by 4m, that will give us what a is. So we can say, therefore, a is equal to um, m's cancel. 2 over 4 is a half, so it's a half g. Okay? which is the same as 0 0.5 g, the way they want us to show. Okay, the acceleration of A is 0 0.5 g. That's not only the acceleration of A, it's also the acceleration of B. Right, then it says, state how in your solution you have used the fact that the string is modeled as being inextensible. We can say that the acceleration of both particles will be the same. The acceleration of A and B have the same magnitude. They're not exactly the same because one is up and one is down. They're in opposite directions, but they have the same magnitude. The same magnitude. Okay, that's how we can phrase that, okay? Because they are modeled, but they are, um, um, <coughs> they are connected by an inextensible string, that means both of them will have the same acceleration. Okay, now, that's part C done. Now to part D. <clears throat> okay, so we have part D. It says the speed of A at the instant immediately before it hits the floor is V. Find V in terms of G and H. Okay, so we know that this is A. Let me just uh, fix that. Okay, so this is a particle A. All right. So we know that it starts off H meters above the ground. This is the ground. All right, it's 8 meters above the ground. We know that it starts off at 0 meters per second. We want to find um, what V is in terms of G and H. We know that it's accelerating towards the ground with an acceleration of a half G meters per second squared. Okay, so now um, we have to find V in terms of G in H. So we can use the Suvat equations because this is going with constant velocity. So we know S is H, okay? I'm going to take down as positive, okay? Because it's moving downwards, okay? It's moving downwards. That's how it's going. So um, down is positive. U is zero. V is, capital V. A is a half G meters per second and T we don't know. So we can use the equations. Um, if we have to use H in there, we can use V, U, A, and S in the equation V squared equals U squared plus 2 A, S. And we can find what V is. So let's see what happens there. We've got V squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times a half G times S, which is H. Okay, so V squared is equal to, this cancels with that, is equal to G times H. So V is equal to the square root of GH, and that's meters per second. So there's the answer to D. Okay, that's part D. Now for part E, it says, as a result of hitting the floor, <coughs> A rebounds with the speed a half V. So A hits the floor with the speed V. And it rebounds with the speed a half of V. Find in terms of mg and h the magnitude of the impulse exerted by the floor on A. Okay, so when something is um, falling, hits the floor, it comes down and hits the floor, okay, with a speed of V. Okay, so this is before it hits the floor. Okay, now after it hits the floor, it's going upwards 
with a speed of a half V. That's before, that's after. This thing is has a mass of 3m. That's the mass of, of this um, A. So we want to find the magnitude of the impulse, impulse exerted by the floor on A. So the impulse that the, the, the ball A got is its change in momentum. So the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So it's mv minus mu, or m times v minus u. So here our m is 3m. Our v is, now I'm going to take down as positive because it started moving downwards. So v is the, um, is the final velocity of this thing, which is upwards, so it's minus a half v. We're taking down as positive. And u is the initial velocity, which is going down, which is positive, which is v. That's the initial velocity. All right, so the impulse is going to be m, which is 3m, the mass, which is 3m, times v minus u. So times minus a half v minus u, which is v. So you have the impulse is equal to 3m um, times minus 3 over 2 v. So you end up with times that is so that's th minus 9 m v over 2. Okay, that is the impulse. Okay, but they want the impulse in terms of m g and h. So we already worked out here that v is equal to root g h. v is equal to the square root of g h. So I can say the impulse is going to be, um, we want the magnitude, the magnitude, so forget the minus sign, be 9 times m times root g h over 2. That's the impulse, okay, that's received by the, um, the uh, what's it, the ball, uh, the ball a hitting the floor. The impulse received by the ball from the floor. And we can see that that impulse is up because it's negative. We took down as positive, but we don't care about the sign. We care about its magnitude. So there's the answer to part E. Okay, now for part F, it says find in terms of H the height above A, the height of A above the floor when A next comes to rest. So H is the original height of A from the floor. That's what the H is. In terms of that H, we've got to find the height of A above the floor when it next comes to rest. So what's happened to A is it has basically reached the floor and it's bounced off the floor and it's risen up. Now once it hits the floor, the string becomes slack and the string will stay slack until A has gone up and then reached its highest height and then come down again. We don't have to worry about the string becoming slack again. Just now, when A bounces off the floor, it's going to reach a particular height. It's going to reach a particular height, um, which we'll call, we'll just call that, that S, the displacement above this original place here, the place where it hits the floor. When it hits the floor, it's going to be going up with a speed of a half V. And when it reaches the top of its flight, it's going to basically... Um, you know, just be under the force of gravity, which will be acting downwards. And it's going to come to instantaneous rest. So it's going to be here at zero meters per second. That's how we know uh, how to find S. We know that its speed at that point is going to be zero because it's going to go up and it's under the force of gravity. It'll come, it'll stop for a second and then it's going to start falling down again. So we want to find that, that distance S when it reaches the top of its flight now. Okay, the string is now slack, okay, because it's hit the floor now. Right, the string is now slack and it's going to bounce upwards, and B, you know, still maybe going up, stops there for a little while, but A is going to go up. The string slack. So now <clears throat> we want to find what S is in terms of H. H being the height of the uh, the original height of A above the floor. Okay, so if we use suvat here because we have a constant acceleration, which is just the force of gravity. So this is, you know, just under the effect of gravity here. Um, I'm going to take up as positive this time because in the beginning of this journey now, this this part of the journey I'm considering, it's going upwards. So S is what we have to find. I'll call it S. Um, U is the initial velocity, which is upwards, so it's going to be a half of V. V is zero, the velocity at which it comes to instantaneous rest. 
A is acting downwards, and we've taken up as positive, so I'm going to call that negative G. And time, we don't know. So we want to find what S is. We've got S, U, V, and A. So the equation that we're going to use is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now we know V is 0. We know U is um, a half V, so it's a half V squared. And we've got plus 2 times minus G times S. That's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this. Okay, so now let's see what happens here. Um, this becomes minus, well, let's, let's, let's replace the V with what V is equal to, which is root GH. We know that V is equal to the square root of GH in this situation. So you're going to have 0 equals, that's going to be root GH over 2 all squared minus 2 GS. Okay, and we have to find what S is in terms of H. So this is going to give me, um, if I square this, I'm going to have GH over 4 and minus 2GS. If I rearrange this, I have 2GS is equal to GH over 4. So we can see the Gs, if I divide both sides by 2G, so S is equal to GH over 4 divided by 2G. So you're going to have 2G multiplying the denominator, the g's cancel, 2 times 4 is 8, so s is equal to h over 8. Okay, so that is uh, the height above the floor when it comes to rest, h over 8. Okay, 1 eighth of h if you want, same thing. So there's the answer to that question, part f, and that concludes the questions in question number 8, and it concludes the paper as well, of June 2019, GCE M1. Um, other questions from this particular paper will be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere over here. Other questions from this topic of connected particles and pulleys can be found in this um, playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Don't forget to look at the uh, end at the uh, description and look at the links for some useful um, kind of uh, links for different playlists that I have for different. Um, subjects, IGCSE A-level. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.